Okay, those of you who are taking thesis seminar, wanted to summarize a little bit about where we are in the process for week five. If you go to our stream section, you'll see some videos that I've been uploading this week. Just as a reminder, you can access those obviously through the stream itself in Google Classroom from your cellular, cellular phone. And you can also access those same videos from week five under videos. So here you'll see a tab called videos just as in weeks past there are uh, video tabs for each of the week of all the videos that I've, I've been sharing with you over the course of this semester so you can go into each week and access uh, each tab called videos and there you'll find the videos for that particular week for this week again week five take a look so far three videos have been shared and you can take a look at those there if you wish I want to talk about lecture number five for this week and um, specifically look at the essential questions. This is, again, where we're at at the current uh, and, and throughout the process. We, we need to look at these following questions and think about, as we finish our literature review this week, uh, how we would answer these questions. So the first question here is, how do my evidence sentences within each of my body paragraphs answer the question words what, how, when, why, etc. about my topic sentence? So this is to help us make sure that the citations that we're using that are coming from outside sources directly relate to the topic sentence. And I think one of the easiest ways to do that is simply asking a question word to make sure, again, that there is an alignment between the evidence sentences and the main idea. How have I maintained a balance between evidence and analysis sentences within each of my body paragraphs? Here we need to make sure that we don't have too much evidence and not enough analysis, nor do we have too much analysis and not enough evidence. We need a good balance, making sure always that the evidence precedes or comes before the analysis. We don't want to analyze something that we haven't presented evidence first. So make sure that the order in which you're presenting those types of sentences, the evidence sentences and the analysis sentences, are appropriate and also make sure that there's good balance between those two. How do my topic sentences within each body paragraph collectively relate to the respective level two section headings? So now we're concerned about not only the uh, not only the order in which we're presenting our uh, topic sentences which will later become body paragraphs but also that they all reach some sort of conclusion that relates to the main section heading. So make sure that you're looking at each topic sentences as claims. Make sure we're avoiding uh, the verb to be and to have for the most part for our topic sentences and that we're checking the order of our topic sentences and that they all relate uh, to the main sections. How do my two to four level two section headings relate to my thesis statement? So here we want to make sure that now our headings themselves, the two to four headings, relate to our uh, reasons or ways part of the thesis statement. Remember that the thesis statement begins with a topic, then opinion, and then concludes with listing either reasons or ways. And those reasons or ways should directly and explicitly link to the sections of your literature review. Your final essential question for this week, how does my thesis statement answer my research questions? So just make sure that uh, there's an alignment between the research questions that you're posing that will appear at the end in the transitional paragraph of your literature review and that you have a direct answer as a thesis statement that comes at the end of your introduction right before your first main section of your literature review. Now the process here, I'm not going to talk about all of this, but I think it's worth taking a look at um, the process on which uh, we've been discussing on how to develop a literature review. I want to concentrate now though on the transitional paragraph. We talked a little bit about this in week one, uh, but as you begin completing your literature review, you need to have a transitional paragraph that appears at the end of your literature review. Kind of consider this transitional paragraph your quote-unquote conclusion paragraph. So begin in your transitional paragraph by restating your thesis statement. Then you're going to summarize the context of the problem. Now the context of the problem is originally going to appear in the introduction paragraph, again, which we haven't talked much about, we'll talk about later. But here you're basically going to restate the context of the problem 
And I would suggest that you begin with uh, a phrase similar to the purpose of this study. Really look at the purpose of your study as addressing a real, a real world problem. So here you can have a sentence that states the purpose of the study is to, and then you address or you state the uh, problem that you are researching. If you have a citation, even better yet, you can include one here. I'm going to suggest also later when you develop your introduction paragraph that you also include a, a citation, at least one, uh, to support uh, the problem that you're stating. Then we're going to transition into your research question or questions. And so I would suggest when you write out your questions in your transitional paragraph that you write it out as part of the paragraph and not as bullet points. So you're going to have something like you're going to have your, your, uh, your, your research questions. You're going to have some sort of sentence that leads into your research questions. And you might have something like as follows, colon. And then you can list out how, and then you can state the first question. And then you can have the second question and so on. And then maybe you have the third one and so on. Okay, so this is what I mean by listing it out or writing it out as part of the paragraph, not, not as bullet points. This is how I would suggest that you write out your uh, research questions in the transitional paragraph. Finally, you're going to conclude with a closing statement. So kind of finalize your paragraph to put a, a button on it, as they say, and to uh, complete the, the transitional paragraph. Remember that this is the first time you're going to mention your own study. So here, it's okay to say the purpose of this study, this study being your study. We're not going to have any language like this prior to the transitional paragraph. So make sure that you're not writing this either in the, in the introduction later on or anywhere in your literature review. Don't reference your own study, saying something like this study. Right? This is all about uh, writing the literature review is all about presenting other ideas, presenting your argument, but supporting it and trying to gain perspective from what other researchers have uh, done in the area that you're researching. So make sure that in the transitional paragraph you include these components, these aspects in this order. And yeah, that should, that should take care of it. Now the, um, the next section I have here in our newsletter for this week, I would include revisiting these questions if you haven't already. Most of these questions should be more familiar with you. You should have some answers for these questions as you're becoming more familiar with the, the aspects, the different aspects of your study. If any of these questions are not clear at this point, then we need to discuss it in our tutoring session. So please bring these up if you're not sure. But these questions are meant to guide you to orient yourself and to your own study um, because you're going to have to have, especially when we start next week in the data collection process, uh, you're going to need answers to these questions, solid answers to these questions. Otherwise, uh, collecting the data becomes mm, a greater challenge. Speaking of next week, just as a reminder, we are going to have a whole group meeting from 9 to 11 next Monday, March 4th. Uh, there was a change. We're going to move it up one hour, so 9 to 11 will be in your regular room, and we'll meet and have a discussion about the data collection process. Very important meeting, and uh, we expect everyone to be there to, um, to ask questions and uh, to get more familiar with the next phase of our study, which is uh, organizing and creating our instruments and collecting our data. So I hope this helps, and uh, I look forward to seeing your finished literature reviews. If you have any questions, of course, you can post them in your document. As always, I get notifications, so I'll go in and leave comments as needed. If you have uh, serious concerns, feel free to schedule some time with me, or obviously we'll talk during our tutoring session.